Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new rebuild and today we are going to be rebuilding Union Berlin, heavily requested upon the rebuilds that I do do. Also, it's going to be a mixture combined with a tactic that we have taken from the community and trust me, this one is a fantastic 4-2-3-1. So be sure to stick around to how this tactic does work and how it does perform. But if you guys do enjoy these rebuilds, be sure to leave a like on this video, comment below what team you want to see next being rebuilt and also do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. So we're going to kick things off with obviously this screen here. Now, I want to quickly say we did actually end up playing quite a few seasons. So there are areas that aren't as going to be detailed in terms of stats, but we do still go everything in a lot of depth. So do stick around for that. But as you can see here, we're actually predicted to finish around 10th. Now, I think we can go above and beyond that in the first season, especially with this tactic. I ideally i'd like to finish in the top seven if i can six six plus would be ideal but around that position would be great obviously we don't have a lot of money to work with here as i'm going to show you we've only actually got eight hundred and sixty-two thousand pounds so we're not going to be making any signings in the first transfer window so that's a bit of a downfall when you start with this club obviously you're not ever going to be given billion, not billions but millions high you know big big figures until possibly you get taken over or you really do progress but this amount you can't even really sign anyone with installments because you need a little amount to sort of play about with to start and we simply haven't got the money so unfortunately we're going to have to go into this first season by pretty much not adding anyone to the team and i did take some time to look where we could try and bring someone in if we if we could the miracle could happen and unfortunately there are a few positions which in my opinion you do need to strengthen in this team one of them isn't the goalkeeper right away obviously you've got a three star ability keeper here who can do more than a job okay backup nothing too special but again nothing too horrific at right back it's not too bad you do have quite a good 24 year old julian ryerson coming in with four and a half on oh, four and a half star sorry three and a half star ability with obviously a 35 year old backup so possibly or definitely in the year or two you are going to need to bring in either someone to replace um ryerson and have him as backup or someone just as backup because obviously 35 years old you're probably going to get two seasons out of him tops we then go over to the center backs and we do have decent options but we definitely could look to improve you know bring some players in because obviously we've got a couple of low knees in um and other than that we've got a 30 year old center back who's obviously at his peak and the others are okay but definitely could look to strengthen it in some areas ideally you'd like to have these two as backup ideally because two and a half stars not really going to cut it um, and he is 24 he's not as if he's like you know 18 and he's got tons and tons of years to sort of develop now going over to the left back this is a position which obviously again very similar to the right back this one is slightly younger 30 years old so it's going to have a few seasons in him but you are going to need to replace him by bringing in someone very very good preferably young as well and then you can have this guy as a backup option with the two or the you know as a two and a half star ability going to the midfielders then now we actually are quite gifted in this area we've got quite a lot of people to choose from again nothing that's really going to stand out to you in terms of world class obviously we've also got a couple of older ones you've got a 31 year old here who obviously is going to play in this shadow striker role um and the rest of them are sort of you know mid-20s getting older so Again, it's a position which ideally, as we go on through the seasons, we are going to have to try and bring in some younger players to replace some of these people who really haven't peaked to the standard and the level we're going to need to try and win the Bundesliga. Obviously, that is the point of this video. We're rebuilding, we're rebuilding Union Berlin, not only to the point so we can get them a better squad, but also to the point where they can win the Bundesliga title. Now, going over to the Shadow Striker role, as I mentioned, we are going to be playing Haraguchi there. Obviously, he's quite good. Um, despite these role abilities, he's actually got quite good attributes. And then we're going to have several several people that can play there. But ideally, again, these are positions we do need to be strengthening. On the left-hand side, this guy is quite good, actually. I've used him in another save. It's going to be Becker, so he's going to be starting there. Again, very similar. We've got very versatile players that can play across this front three, but no real set-in-stone players apart apart from Becker. On the right-hand side, again, same old story. We also got Sayabachu there, who's okay, nothing too special. Also got the likes of Oz, um, Ostanali, but it's how you say that. Decent player, again, nothing too out there. I would say this team, in a word, would be average. It is a very average team, and it's down to us to try and replace it. We do also have up front, you've got to take into account that these players will also be forced to play on the wings, because we don't really have the depth. Um, we've got... Um, 
see a Batu again, sorry. We've got Becker, and then it does fall off a little bit there. Um, however, Mitchell doesn't look horrific, but he is 31. There are a lot of older players in this team. But this is going to be the team going into the first season. As I said, there is going to be no transfers purely because we just haven't got the money to spend on players. So this is going to be the GYRFM. If you do not know who this guy is, I'm pretty sure you will. Everyone knows who he is. Do check out his tactic video. It will be on Hood Gamers channel, actually. he, I think GYRFM makes tactics. Hood Gamers makes the videos. So I've never tested this tactic out. I want to test it out, see how it performs, because there's a lot of hype about it. A lot of people like it. And I know last year it was probably my favorite 4 2 3 one. So in my opinion, this tactic is a must try so do check it out the link will be in the description not only to hood gaming's video on it but also to the fm scout where you can download it so show some love on both but this is how the team does line up it's going to be rono in gold trimmel um kenoshe heinz i'm not even going to attempt that because i'll butcher it um shafaru in midfield kadira becker um habera Haraguchi and Siabachu is going to be the start on 11. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the seasons. Now, I would like to mention um, there are quite a few seasons we did play in this one. I believe it did get to four or five. So because we do have a big part of the video being focused on the tactic, I'm not going to be going through as much of the stats each season, apart from the last one. Um, but do stick around to see how, the, how they went, because I will say it went very varied. Some seasons were good, some seasons were really bad. So do stick around to see exactly how we done. But that's enough talking. Let's break down the first season. So the first season actually went okay. A lot better than what I what I thought, to be honest. Um, Obviously, I did say right at the start of the video, I want to be finishing in the top seven. And that is exactly what we done. We actually managed to finish in fifth place. With Sia Batu coming in with 27 goals and Becker coming in with 13 assists. Now, 67 goals scored. 39 conceded it's quite obvious where we're weak we're weak at defending so that is going to be the area we look to improve not the best display in competitions i'm going to be honest however the pocket against dortmund it is a tough tie and benfica i feel like we could be beating them but unfortunately we didn't going into before we do that this one i am going to show you some of the stats because it was the first season i did want to sort of just break it down now we're going to have see a with 27 goals um, Lowering coming in there with 19, 9 for Becker, Mikkel coming in with 8 in terms of assists. Again, we're going to have 13 coming in from Becker. Then there is a bit of a drop off. Actually, a couple of nines here. Um, Haraguchi and also the left back coming in with 9. Now, this makes it doesn't really give it justice because there's not really any standout stats. Like 27 goals for the top goal scorer isn't really that good. But to do. To get where we have with this team that we currently have without having any signings, finishing fifth, it does show how good this tactic actually is. Um, in my opinion, it's a great first season. We've not pumped money into the team or anything, but obviously we are seeing here there's not tons and tons of goals in the team either. Despite being ranked best in the division, you haven't got several players scoring even 10 plus. You've only got two players scoring 10 plus goals and the assists really do drop off other than these sort of three players here. So it's all about building a more altogether all well-rounded squad and hopefully with the addition of 25 million we can do that obviously i'm going to take some time now we're going to go we're going to spend this money to go into the into the second transfer window and hopefully we can try and bring in two if not three players and that is what we've done now you're probably wondering how has this happened and that is purely because of installments add-ons i absolutely love them and we have managed to spend 86 million from 25 million actual budget that just shows how much you can actually go above and beyond your budget now it was not an easy deal to push over the line and anyone that knows who he is is instantly going to know what a sign this guy is going to be but we start off by signing Iga Ogbu for 2.7 million then it's going to be the star man for 78 million pounds and then we go to Salzburg who have got a range of really good players by the way to Camille Patok Piatkowski, believe us how you say that. I do apologize. I know I'm going to offend a lot of people. I do apologize with that. Obviously, 2.7 million, 78 million, and 4.9 million. We go into the players. The first player here is actually going to be easily one of our starting centre backs. I wanted to bring in a young 20 centre back, obviously, to I know we've already got a couple of them, but um my idea was I, I couldn't go out and afford to, you know, sign a dolly, sign someone ridiculous. So I thought. I'll scout some good players that are similar standard, but a little bit better for their age. And this guy is obviously fantastic, pretty much well-rounded player. Still very young, didn't cost a lot, and can easily get into the first team. This guy's going to be the star of the team, potentially for the entire 
in the entire video. Um, he costs an absolute fortune, but he is really the complete package. Absolutely rapid on the wing. Fantastic finishing for a winger. Only 22 years of age as well. Great passing, great technique, great determination, great flair. And you are really getting everything. You're getting a player that he can play on the right, but dominantly on the left, in my opinion. And he is worth every penny. He is really, really good on this game, guys. So if you need a winger, you want to go for something a little bit different, then do go for this guy. And the last player here, again, is going to be a hybrid player, is what I like to label him as. He can play centre-back, he can play right-back, he can play in the midfield, he can play all the way up to right wing if you really want him to. And he doesn't really stand out in one area, apart from, to be fair, his reach, his fitness, his determination, his aggression. Everything else is quite average, but that's completely fine because this guy can cover several areas of the pitch. And that is exactly what we need. When you don't have big budgets, the one bit of advice I'll always give is to sign a player like this who can play in several positions because then when you do need a player to cover that position, this guy can come in. And that is what he's got to do. And this is how the team does look. So again, obviously using the same tactic, no queries of that at all. It's going to be Rono, Ryanson, um, Jaquel, um, Kanush. Um, I cannot say that left back. I do not want to get it wrong because I will absolutely butcher it. Um, we then have Shafa in midfield next to Kadira, Becker, Lewering, and also Mudrick and Asiya Batu. So again, we are going to see the addition of Mudrick coming in right from the rip. And it, it's no surprise, I mean... It's not really going to be a question, does he get in the team or not? Now, this attack does look a lot better. Um, also, I know I did say I wanted to strengthen the defence. That was the priority. But this guy comes up once in a blue moon. I didn't even think he was going to accept to join. So I had to get him when I could. But we still strengthened the back line. We signed an all-and-out centre-half. And also a player that can play centre-half, can play right back, and can also play in these two roles here. So let's get into the second season now and hopefully we can see a little bit of an improvement with the money we've spent. Now, unfortunately, with the addition of the new players, we've not actually done better. Um, we managed, well, I say managed like it's an accomplishment. We finished eighth. Now, this is quite worrying because obviously we actually finished fifth in the first season. We've spent money um, and we have improved. It's not as if we've wasted the money. And it's just not worked out in the first season. Obviously, these players do need time to gel the new sign-ins. But this time, we're actually second best at scoring. Third best at, third worst at conceding. So to be fair, that has strengthened a lot more um, than what it was in the first season. But unfortunately, eighth place. I mean, it was a very, very tight. I've noticed that with the Bundesliga, especially um, as you go on into the video, you'll see how tight it does get. But we missed out on any type of European football, which is not good at all. We got to the quarterfinals of Europa League and got knocked out by Arsenal. A very tough tie. This one here is a bit of a kick in the teeth because we should be beating them, in my opinion. Siabachu doesn't let us down, though, with 31 goals. And Mudrick actually getting the highest match rating and also the most assists. So And also the most player of the match. So to be fair, the new signing has done very well there. And luckily for us, and I do say luckily because I do believe that this team has got potential, but there is a, there are a lot of players that do need to be moved on and also a lot of players you need to bring in. And we have been given £28 million, 23, well, 20, I was going to say 27 and a half, but just under that, actually. 27 and a half million, we'll say, to spend on players. And I think that is actually quite a generous budget considering the season we've just had. Um, I do really want to see significant improvement on eighth place i mean the first season was really good fifth place it's a good sort of building stone you know good stepping stone you get there you can go up you can go up but to be you know go from fifth to eighth is a bit of a kick in the teeth but now this is exactly it's down to me now we've got a look at some players we can bring in and hopefully we can strengthen this team to kick back into the third season and we did that all right we did that all right indeed because we actually went with a slightly more direct approach because the defense obviously has improved so I just thought, you know what, let's go and sign some more absolute beauties, especially in Makoko, um, who is going to be costing us 60 million, which in my opinion actually isn't too bad um, because he, you can spend a lot more on Makoko. Now, the reason I went with him, I know he gets used a lot, but obviously he's proven in the Bundesliga. He's only going to be playing in the Bundesliga and just that front three now, you're going to have Mudrick and obviously you're going to have Makoko and I don't, possibly Becker on the right hand side we'll have to see how it does line up but we're going to have one of the best attacks in the division and there is no reason why we should not be the highest scorers now i mean that front three is going to be absolutely outrageous we also do sign nicholas Hedel from rapid vienna for 7.75 million after the add-ons and that is going to be a keeper because our keeper wasn't the best and he also was you know 
it's replaceable basically is what i'm trying to say and this guy can replace him i'm a really big fan of this guy good reflexes um one of ones could do with a little bit of improvement but you know he's only 23 years of age um again good kicking good determination good jumping good throwing he is a really good really good keeper and as here you can see he's got the potential to become a leading bundesliga keeper um or player which is exactly what we're after played a lot of games for rapid vienna as well been there his entire career at different stages of rapid vienna and i believe this guy can walk his way right into the team and that will strengthen up that back line even more I don't need to talk about this guy. We know how good he is. He's been incredible for how many years on Football Manager now. He is one of the go-to strikers in the game. And I just feel like he fits in this Union Berlin side just like that. Obviously, been playing in the Bundesliga. You've got no risk of it not working out, really. Fantastic finishing. Really, really rapid on the ball as well. Great flair. Good composure. Good technique. And he doesn't really have many flaws at all. Um... Well, apart from down here, you can see, obviously, doesn't have the greatest jump and reach, but we're not really looking for him to score tons of headers anyway. But he's only 19, and that is the big attraction why you sign players like this, because you're going to get a striker for over 10 years if you play him out till they're 32, 33. So for that price of 60 million, it's absolutely incredible. And this is how the team now does line up going into the third season. And it's absolutely outrageous. It is going to be that front three I was raging about, you know, not raging, sort of hyping over. Um, that is going to be Mudrick, Makoko, Becker, Arabira in the um, shadow striker role. Um, we've got Schaffer, Kadira, and pretty much the same back four, but the addition of Hedl in goal. Now, this team is slowly becoming better and better. The players are improving. We've obviously got a lot of quality come through the door. But there is still positions we do need to strengthen. So obviously going forward, we'd like to possibly bring in new plays in these areas here. Um, the fullbacks are going to need replacing at some point as well. Possibly another centre-back. But we're slowly sort of noticing this team strengthen. Um, obviously you can see here, Hedl, three and a half star. We've also got Mudrick, who's actually four and a half star. And Makoko, who I guarantee will end up being way above three and a half star by the end of this save. So... This team is rapidly improving and we're seeing that. Now, the only way we're going to see it actually in stats is by getting the results. So let's get into the third season and hopefully we can see a significant improvement. So it definitely is an improvement, guys, in the next season because we managed to finish fourth and this is exactly what we want to be seeing because now we've got Champions League football that should mean more money, which means we can improve the team at a quicker rate, which is exactly what we want to be doing. Makoko comes in, he gets top goal scorer in the first season. Did I doubt him? No, not in the slightest. We also have Mudrick coming in again with not only most assists, but most player of the matches and also the highest average match rating over the entire season. Third best at scoring goals, scoring 74. I still think we've easily got the potential now to be ranking one in that category. And we are now the seventh best at goals conceded. So still, I do, I'd like to get that down to possibly three or fourth, but that will come in time when we, you know, even strengthen the midfield, because we've got to remember the midfield also do defend and we haven't got the best players in them two roles there. So overall, very happy with how this season has gone. Again, we've never really been good in the cups. So that seems to be a curse. Um, but overall, champions league football really happy with it so hopefully with the addition of 32 million pounds um we can strengthen and i believe obviously we got a little bit of smudging bit more a little bit more because obviously we did get champions league football that does make all of the difference so let's go into what is going to be i believe the fourth transfer window unless i have lost count and let's try and strengthen this team but we'll focus on the midfield if we can so it's actually going to be quite a low spend and transfer window in this one. Um, and that is going to be 21 million. Obviously, you can see there we've got Bamba coming in for 8.75. We've got Parisi coming in for 7.5. And we've got Farias coming in for 4.8. And I believe the players we got for the cost that we spent is really, really good, to be honest with you. This is going to be the first player. It's actually going to be a left back. I did mention we do need to replace the full backs at some point, And this is the perfect time. 24 years of age. Very good tackling. Reasonably quick as well very well rounded for a fullback three star ability can also grow to a four star and become a leading bundesliga fullback 24 years of age so again you're gonna have a fullback for sort of six to seven years before you see any noticeable decline and i feel like this guy does fit in very well obviously he can play slightly further up as well if we did ever decide to change formation which we won't do but he is a very versatile player down the left hand side 
And I think with that personality as well, this guy is really a great sign and especially for that cost. We then go over to Farius and I've used this guy on last FM and I was a big fan of him, a real big fan of him. Obviously, he's played a lot, a lot of games at Cologne, Cologne there. Um, but for this price tag, again, you can't really go wrong. He can play Shadow Striker or on the wing or even up front. For us, he will be playing Shadow Striker. That is the area I really want him to be playing in. He's already a lead and Bundesliga player. 13 finishing you can expect to be seeing from him. Now, he's one of these technical players. He's not rapid on the ball. He's not the quickest. He's okay. 13 pace, 14 acceleration. Um, he's not rapid, but he's got good agility. He's got good flair. He's good off the ball, good technique, good passing, good first touch, and great dribbling. So he's more of a very tricky sort of ball at the feet type of player. Um, you know, sort of like an Urzil. Um, that might be a bit of a comparison because the Urzil was world class. Um, but that type of player, not ridiculously quick, but very good on the ball. And that is exactly what we need for that shadow striker position. And that is going to be I don't believe I included. I did not include Bamba. Obviously, I do play these. I take screenshots. I do apologize about that. Um, so we will look at Bamba um, towards the end of the video, exactly what we brought in there. But this is going to be how the team does line up. Um, as you can see, Farius gets in the team right away. No questions asked. Um, Bamba does slot in right away, by the way. So we can see a little bit about him. A free star ability player who can also play in the midfield. He actually was brought in to play in the midfield role. But he actually, when I filter by best 11, which I always do, he goes in, he goes in at left centre back and that strengthens up that entire back line. New left back, new left centre back. Um, the same right centre back and right back. Obviously, the new keeper from last season. Farius comes in. Makoko stays. Mudrick stays. Becker stays. These two in midfield do stay. Now, although I keep saying I want to replace them, they are okay. They're not horrific. It's just ideal situation would be to eventually replace them and improve that midfield area. But let's get into the fourth season and hopefully we can we can continue improving. However, this season, you might see a bit of a decline because we have got Champions League football. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot more games. And we already finished fourth. So the only way we're going to improve is to, you know, finish third upwards, which could be a bit of an ask. But it seems that it wasn't a big ask because we actually managed to finish second. Just behind Bayern Munich there, obviously... And not a very big gap at all, really. This time we were the best at scoring goals. 90 goals scored. Absolutely sensational. Sixth best at conceding. Again, I would still like to improve that a little bit if I can. And this is going to be 43 goals conceded. Not the best sort of... Champions League path. I'm going to be honest. It really wasn't the best. Um, I just don't. Feel, I don't feel like this team is ready for the Champions League yet. The Pockel actually a very good display. We got all the way to the final, only to get knocked out by Dortmund, which is a bit of a kick in the teeth. But at least we had a good run in that cup. Makoko coming in with 50 goals. Mudrick again with the highest match rating. Becker coming in with the most assists, and it is going to be Makoko actually picking up the most Player of the Match awards. And going into what is going to be the next season, we are going to be given £39 million. Pounds. It's going to be a little bit more um, because obviously we have got Champions League again. We've also gone, nearly won the league. I'm um, finishing in second place. So it's quite a big budget to be to be given. And I do believe that it is, it is earned. I mean, we are now, we've got them from, I believe, OK, so rich. The overall balance has gone up. So it is deserved. We do need some of this budget to strengthen the team. So let's get into the next transfer window and continue strengthening this forever growing Union Berlin side. And that is what we've done. And we really did hit the defense this time. We really did. Um, and we've done it smartly as well because we approached players that were possibly... There's a player or two in here which I'm going to talk about. Now, the first one is going to be Estevez um, for 1 million. We then go over to Zito from her for Berlin. We can another team in the Bundesliga for 12.5 million. Wrench from Bayern Merchant, Bayern Merchant, Borussia Merchant Gladbach for six and a half million, and Timber from Feyenoord for 10 million. So spending a total of 30 million. The first player is going to be Timber. Now, this guy was pretty much on a very short contract. Um, luckily, I was. I think possibly because I did finish second that the appeal was there a little bit and we were one of, I believe, three or four teams to get him. And luckily he chose us. This guy is a perfect player. He can play centre-back. He can play in midfield. He can, you know, it's two roles he can cover very, very well. He's a fantastic player and pretty much a go-to signing for most people on FM. 
We then go over to Wrench, and this is an interesting one. Obviously, coming from originally from Ajax, he went to Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's not been having a great time, so it is a bit of a risk. But for that price tag, again, very similar to Timber, although this guy can play right back. He can play centre back. He can also play in midfield. So I am what I'm doing with this sort of team. I'm bringing in multiple versatile players that can cover multiple positions because I think that is the way forward with this Union Berlin side. There are a ton of injuries, I must say. So it is very important you have good depth. And that is exactly what players like Wrench do bring. We then go over to Zito. And I thought, Do you know what? We've got a world class left wing. Let's bring in a very fan. A fantastic right wing as well. And that is going to be Zito from Hertha Berlin. He's going to be three and a half star. He is pretty much at his peak. This guy is exactly like Mudrick. I say exactly. Similar to Mudrick in the fact he's absolutely rapid. Good bit of flair on him. Just hasn't got the finishing. That's the only thing. So it is a little bit of a risk when I say this. But I do believe this player still can be a very good addition. He's only 24 years of age. So he can, you know, he's going to hold his value quite well. So if I was playing this save myself, I do personally believe if I did need to move him on, I wouldn't be losing out on too much money if I had to. But I think he can do it. He's got good stamina, very quick, and he can run up players, which is exactly what I want to be seeing from the team. And this player here is just a bargain. I'm going to be honest. Estevez, he's not going to be completely world-class. No, he isn't. But for 1 million, I mean, come on. For 1 million, it's an absolute steal. And I, was he an intentional target? No. When I saw him for 1 million, did I have to get him? Yes, simple as that. I had to get him for 1 million. You can't really go wrong. And this is going to be the team going into what is going to be the next season. And the team now is looking really good. We've got Hedil, we've got Rensha right back, we've got Jacquel, Bamba, Parisi, Timber, Kadira, Zito, Farias, Mudrick, and Makoko. That team can win a title. So hopefully we can see a team that either finishes again in second or possibly this season could go on and win the title. It's exactly what we've done, guys. So this is going to be the last season. So we are going to go through a little bit of the stats as well on this one. We won the Bundesliga on goal difference. It was very tight. Dortmund actually three teams finishing on the same points, but different goal difference. Bayern only a point behind. If they wouldn't have lost or drew a game, I am believe that would be the outcome. They would have won it on goal difference. So it was ridiculously tight, but the challenge has been completed. We have completed it. Uni and Berlin are the Bundesliga champions. Now, I want to quickly say before we do get any further into the video, if you guys are enjoying this so far, be sure to leave a like on the video and do comment a sort of rebuild challenge. Is there a challenge you want to see mix with a rebuild? And I'll continuously do it until we reach that challenge. Um, and also do subscribe to the channel it's completely free and it does help the channel grow massively Makoko coming in though with 54 goals Zito with the most assists in his first season it's going to be Makoko again for the most player of the match awards you get out of the groups in the Champions League but unfortunately we get quite a tough opponent in Manchester United it's never going to be an easy job um, and we do get knocked out in the quarterfinals the Pockel again seemed to be cursed in that however although we got to the final last year this is a lot more of a disappointment against Bayer Leverkusen. I believe that's Bayer Leverkusen. That is Bayer Leverkusen. The stats are quite good. Um, again, 82 goals scored, ranking us the best. 47 conceded. So we've never really got that down I, personally. And this is no disrespect to the tactics. It actually does still get really good results. It's definitely not a defensive masterclass tactic. You are going to concede goals, but I will go over ways you can tweak that and possibly look to, you know, make it a more defensive tactic if you wish to do so. But let's look at the data hub then. So team attacking 2.41 goals a game, decent pass completion as well. I'm quite happy with that. Team defending 1.38. So it does concede roughly about a goal a game, but you are going to be scoring two. So it does, it does get results, but we'll look at some of the results now, for example, um, it does have the odd the odd off game, I will be honest. Um, but then, you know, it does have a significant amount of ups. You can see it's quite consistent. And this is all holiday simulated. And I always say a tactic that is actually played with, you can go a lot more flawless in terms of results because you can tweak it mid-game. You can do this mid-game. You can do that mid-game. And it is a very, very good way of getting the best out of a tactic. But let's go and have firstly, how much money have they given us? 35, 36 million if we were going to continue to carry on with this team. But we've left them with a very good squad. And we're going to go over the stats quickly before I do break down the tactic. And that is going to be starting by goals. And we are seeing a few more goals being scored now. 
54 for Makoko, 19 for Farius. What a season. 18 for Zito, 16 for Mudrick. Bamba actually coming up. We didn't get a chance to look at Bamba. So this is Bamba. He does originally play in the ball winner midfielder role. But obviously, we actually are playing him at centre back, and he is a very good option. 15 tackling, absolutely rapid as well. Probably one of the best stats I've seen for a centre back, in my opinion. Also, good attributes for the midfield. This guy is probably one of the best signings we actually made. In terms of assists, we've got 23 for Zito, Mudrick with 21. Then there is a little bit of a fall off, but we are going to get in to... Let's break it down. Yeah, let's get into the probably the part of the video you guys come for, and that is going to be the actual sort of tactic breakdown. Now, again, I'm going to make it very clear. When I do these rebuilds, I test tactics around the community. This is going to be GYRFM's tactic. He's Swan Solar, FM23-4231. So full credit to him. Again, a link to Hood Gamers video will be in there, who I believe makes the content for GYRFM. So do show love on the FM Scout page, on GYRFM's Twitter, and also Hood Gamers video, because this tactic is really a lot of fun to use. Now, we're going to start off, obviously, mentality set to positive in possession, fairly wide, slightly shorter, higher, be more expressive, and low crosses. In transition, counter press, counter, distributes to the fullbacks, and throw it long. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, high press line of engagement, much more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in. And that is going to be that side of things done quite quickly. One thing I would like to say very quickly, if you don't want to get as many yellow cards, I would recommend taking the get stuck in off. That's the only thing I possibly would consider changing. And again, if you want to go in a bit more defensive against some teams, mentality is quite a big thing. You can change this to balanced or possibly even cautious, depending on who you are playing. Going into the player roles and the sweeper keeper is going to be set to take more risks on the support role. The wing back on the right is going to be on support, cross from the byline, shoot less often, run wide with the ball and get further forward. The left back is a wing back on support, cross from byline, shoot less often, run wide with the ball and get further forwards. The two centre backs, um, ball playing defenders, both of them on defend, shoot less often, take more risks and hold position. The right one is exactly the same, shoot less often, take more risks and hold position. Through midfield, a deep line playmaker on support, shoot less often, take more risks and hold position. And on the right hand side is a box to box, thrown from position. On the right hand winger side, sorry, you want an inverted winger on the attack, take more risks, shoot less often, dribble more, cut inside with the ball and get further forwards. On the left hand side, you want an inside forward on attack, shoot less often, tackle harder, dribble more, cut inside with the ball, take more risks, cross less often and get further forwards. We then have the shadow striker on attack. Again, I think this tactic would still work if you wanted an advancement, um, sorry, an advanced playmaker, an attacking midfielder, or possibly even one of these two. But I would stick with the shadow striker if you've got a player suitable because it works really well. Dribble more, take more risks, get further forward and move into the channels. And the last one is going to be an advanced forward on attack, take more risks, dribble more and move into channels. But that is going to be this rebuild complete, guys. That is going to be, I believe it was five seasons to take Union Berlin from where they are now. We rebuilt the squad pretty much completely, brought in a lot, a younger squad, kept some of the players, um, and now we are Bundesliga champions over five seasons. So a very, very, very good rebuild, in my opinion. Do let me know in the comments what you thought, though, and please do comment below any rebuild challenges you want to see done, and also do subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. But that is going to be it for me today, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.